Thanks for stopping by Minnesota Black Robe Regiment. As always, make sure you're subscribed and then make sure you're checking out the bell icon down there to make sure you're getting the notifications. Also, like, comment, and share. Uh, over the weekend, I'm starting late last week. Uh, talk was that there was going to be some compromise in Minnesota uh, to get a, a budget passed. Um, part of what was hanging on that was the governor being willing to give up his uh, peacetime emergency orders. Excuse me, peacetime emergency powers. And uh, along with that, there was some um, talk about an amendment that was proposed to kind of make it easier to get the governor to give up his time. Uh, so this amendment was proposed by um, Senator Gazelka, and I'm I'm looking at a I'm assuming it's not a rough draft, and that uh, that it passed. Um, I've heard a lot of talk about it, but what I want you guys to to hear is, frankly, what ended up being the reality of this uh, amendment. And so I'm gonna. I'm going to read some of this to you. Rollback of pandemic-related fines and penalties, license reinstatements. Notwithstanding Minnesota statute section 12.45 or any other conflicting provision of an executive order or law to the contrary, the maximum penalty for a willful violation of an executive order issued during a peacetime emergency related to the COOF pandemic shall be a misdemeanor and a fine not to exceed 1,000. Any fine levied and collected for a violation of an executive order issued during a peacetime emergency in excess of the maximum fine amount provided in this section shall be reimbursed to the person or entity fined for the violation by the applicable board or agency in any amounts in excess of $1,000 as soon as practical following enactment of the section. Any license revoked by a board or agency due to a violation of an executive order issued during a Peacetime emergency related to the COOF pandemic is reinstated. Effective date, the section is effective retroactively to March 15th, 2020. Termination of peacetime emergency. Constituent and consistent with Minnesota statute section 12.31, subdivision 2, paragraph B, the peacetime emergency declared by executive order number 20 dash 01 issued March 13th, 2020 is terminated. Effective date, the section is effective the day following the presentment of uh, SF number two to the governor pursuant to Article 4, Section 23 of the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. So you're, you're probably thinking, oh, hey, TC is going to be jumping up and down and be super excited about this. And, and to some degree, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Like, first of all, let's address the reality that uh, the governor has agreed um, so magnanimously to give up his uh, peacetime emergencies. Uh, thank you very much, Tyrant Timmy of the People's State of Marxist Soda, for giving up what you should have never had in the first place. And I'm still, we're still going to have the the gentleman, the Republican uh, who authored the bill that allows for peacetime emergency powers to go to the governor. He's still going to be coming on the show. We're going to be having a conversation, it's going to, you know, back and forth um, on how he feels about it, why he defends it still, and what problems he sees with it now. So we will be, we'll be seeing you, Duke. Um, but here's the issue. If you look at how this is worded, it doesn't do anything at all, at all. This doesn't do anything at all for the people like the Lisa Hansons and the Larvina McFarquars and the Lisa Monet Zarzas and and the Jane Powells and, and the Bruce from and Bruce from the Poor House and all the other small businesses, especially the mom and pop uh, restaurants and diners and bars and grills and the tap houses and the taverns and all of that, who lost millions and millions of dollars, millions of dollars in the state of Minnesota in the way of revenue. Millions. It doesn't do anything about that. It doesn't do anything for the Lisa Hansons who have spent thousands and thousands of dollars by way of, of defense funds, um, either because people have donated to their defense or it 
it doesn't do anything to to reimburse those people for the money they've spent out of out of their own pockets you know quite frankly there's so much wrong in this that and 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 also i want you guys to understand that this codifies this codifies the fines okay so before it wasn't codified there was so much um amorphous kind of, of uh, availability in interpretation of what could and could not be done that you weren't seeing a lot of places a lot of jurisdictions really even enforce some of this stuff you did see the department of uh, the minnesota department of health swoop in in a few places and shut some things down but when you take the case of lisa hansen uh, of albert lee the interchange coffee and wine bistro you take you take lisa hansen and you look at what she's gone through now for let's let's just say starting in in december just just the 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 persecution of lisa hansen you look at what she's gone through december january february march april may june going into july okay eight months eight months folks eight months lisa has been looking at fighting criminal charges and she's now not only has she been charged with violations of the governor's executive order she's also now been charged with uh, uh public nuisance which is outside of the purview of what this codification of the coof uh fines do this is this is a ridiculous predicament for people like lisa and others it's absolutely ridiculous we are we are in a situation so you where you take senator paul gazelka who i i i'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he believes he's doing good for the people of minnesota and so he compromises with tyrant timmy the people state of mark's soda and he he says sure we're, we'll grant you this if you agree to give up your peacetime emergency powers, we will grant you this this uh, compromise. We'll we'll make this concession, and and so it allows fines to stay in place. And so so now let's there again. Let's just look at the Larvitas and the uh, the Lisa Monet Zarzas and the Jane Mosses. And now especially the lisa hansons so not only is she still on the hook for any fines up to a thousand dollars and she's also on the hook for all of the the legal defense all of the money that she's out of pocket uh, she's out her lost income and she's still fighting legal battles she's still fighting legal battles so now the governor, and we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. And so now the governor is giving up giving up these powers effective August first, and Lisa's still in a fight for her life. Why? Why is Lisa? Why does Lisa have to continue to be in a fight for her her financial well being? Why is that necessary? So like people in Minnesota, you have got to wake up. You, you've got to realize, you have got to understand that this is going to continue to stretch on for a lot of these people. And so just because you think this is over, just because you think that this is done, doesn't mean that it's done. Like you, this isn't just about you. And I'm an individualist, okay? Everybody knows that. I'm an individualist. I'm a volunteerist. But when these things affect people who are on your side, people who you like, people who you get a, who you get along with, people who you agree with, whether you like them or not, when when they're still in this fight, so are you. You should be too. Do not think for a minute that this has gone away. Cuz it hasn't. This hasn't gone away. Lisa Hansen is still in the fight of her life. She could still lose everything. Not to mention the fact that there again, as I've already reported in one other situation, and, and and as I predicted would happen, they came for Lisa's property. Because Lisa had the audacity to be a good renter 
and was renting her building where she that she spent thousands of dollars on to renovate and to 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 fix up and make it um usable as a bistro she's now out all that money she still has to pay the electricity and and other upkeep on that while she's fighting all of this her business isn't open it got shut down because all of her stuff was stripped from her and now she's going to have to jump through hoops to get any of that licensure back and, and to what end because now the city of albert lee is trying to to force her out of the lease this this compromise this concession that gazelka has made isn't going to do anything for these people. It's not going to do anything for them. They're going to continue to, to struggle. They're, they're going to continue to struggle. And, and what should have happened, what Kazelka should have done and what others should have done, is they should have, quite frankly, they, they should have said, well, no, all the fines are done. No, no more fines, period. Not, not, not just, oh, fines in excess of. It should have been no more fines, period. It should have been stated in, in a way to say all fines that have already been paid will be reimbursed and that there will be no more pursuit of criminal action on this. And Had they insisted on that, the governor wouldn't have agreed to give up his executive power or his peacetime emergency powers. He wouldn't have. Why? Because he wants to make examples of dissidents. And Gazelka is okay with that as long as Gazelka gets what he wants, which is to look like he's doing his part. I was having a conversation with somebody. And they, they said, well, what's your take on this? How do you see this? And I said... What this boils down to is this is a tacit approval of what the governor has done. Gazelka could say that he's fought against the governor. The, the Senate and the House Republicans through all of this can say, oh, we've continued to, to fight the governor on these things. But this, this compromise, this concession allows them to say, you know, look, we, like, we fought and here's the compromise that we came to. But it, it's a tacit approval of the governor's actions. It doesn't dissolve any of the criminal charges, period. It leaves those who have been charged with a criminal record. For what? So Lisa Hansen, if she loses this in trial, is going to have a criminal record for the rest of her life. Granted, it's a, it's, a, it's a misdemeanor, but it's a criminal record. She has something on her record. And people could say, oh, she's a criminal. Look at what she's done. And... It doesn't do, as I've already said, it doesn't do a damn thing to reimburse them for the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that they've spent to fight. And it ultimately doesn't do anything to help those people who have lost millions in, in or even several thousands of dollars in income, of revenue. What happened is that Gazelka, along with all of the other rhinos, have compromised on the backs of the, the American people, the people of, of Minnesota, who have been saying from the get that this is no good, this should not be happening. That it shouldn't be happening. As always, the rhinos sell us out. The rhinos sell us out. And, and keep in mind, too, that this, the argument is, well, he's, he's agreed to give up his, his emergency powers, his peacetime emergency powers. Okay, fine. But he's not giving them up until August 1st. That gives him the entirety of the month of July and what remains now of, of June to come up with or or if you if you will trump up an excuse on the first of august to just reinstate his peacetime emergency powers keep in mind that there is a new strain of the coof out there that everybody 
not everybody, but everybody in the know is freaking out about, about this Delta Delta strain of the COOF. Well, they're, they're very upset that this, this is going to be, and the CDC is already ordering or not ordering, but already suggesting that even people who have had the COOF jab need to be masked back up and that we need to be back to shutting down and that we need to be back to social distancing and all of that, because this new strain is, is, is super dangerous. Just like the first few strains are super dangerous. And, and when you point out that it wasn't nearly as bad as they tell you it was going to be, they, they say, well, that's because we did all these extreme measures to save everyone's lives. And, and like, no, 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 it's just because it wasn't that bad. And Governor Walls is not done with us. Paul Gazelka will continue to use us as a as a, a, a bargaining chip so that he can keep his cushy little position in the House or excuse me in the Senate. And 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 ultimately there's about a handful of people in in the House of Representatives who are genuine constitutionally conservative members of the House of Representatives who are really interested in like fighting for us. And in tat, and they can't even hardly get along themselves because Eric Mortensen's too outspoken for them. And he's, you know, running around like rocking too many boats. Which, if you ask me, is an effective way to do things when it comes to you know the House and the Senate. Like when they can compromise, when they when they can, you know, meet in the middle, the middle is always a very dangerous place for us because the middle is where the fissures form. And when the fissures form, there's a crack. And when the cracks form, there's there's a fault line. And when there's a fault line, the people who get caught in the in, in the in the ensuing earthquake, when that fault line finally separates, are the people of the state of Minnesota. The politicos don't get caught in that. Because they see the they see the earthquake coming, but they just don't bother to warn us when the seismographs are going off. Paul Gazelka threw every one of the hardworking entrepreneurial types who have lost thousands and thousands into the millions and millions of dollars in the state of Minnesota under the bus. He sacrificed the Lisa Hansons. And so instead of pushing this the way he should have, instead of pushing on this and saying, no, all the fines are gone, all the criminal penalties are gone, there will be no criminal penalties, there will be no criminal records, there will be no none of that. And we're, the state's going to reimburse them for all of the money they had to spend out of their own pocket to fight the state. He threw them under the bus. And why? Because he wants to be seen as not shutting down the government. Well, I got news for you. You want to know who's who's better served? If the government shuts down, all of us, Minnesota, all of us. Let the government shut down. Let them shut down. Or better yet, stop paying them, period. All of them, even the ones I like, stop taking money. Let them shut down. And let them stop taking money. They're not doing their jobs. None of this is in the best interest of the people. And the governor still has the power to enact a peacetime emergency in all of this. He's just going to let go of his stuff from 2020 and he'll just reinstate it when he, when he feels like he needs to. And they'll use the new variants to justify it. And nobody in the House or the Senate's going to stop him. They won't stop him because ultimately they can say we fought, but we didn't have the numbers. Look, this particular compromise is dangerous and the governor's not done with us. I keep saying it. He's not done with us. Whatever way he can play this, however he can play this to make himself look good for the 2022 election cycle, that's what he's going to do. And unless we field an outsider who's not in it to play politics and, and, and genuinely field somebody who is an actual outsider, and that means no Scott Jensen's, but somebody who is an outsider, 
We're toast. Walls will remain in office. And they might even flip the Senate. Not necessarily uh, through lawful means, but <laughs> this is Minnesota after all. And don't be excited that, that the governor is giving up his peacetime emergency orders and do not hear this as a positive because the people are still on the hook for the fines that are out there and they're still on the hook for the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that they've had to spend to fight these stupid asinine fines and in in, in criminal penalties that are orders, not criminal pen penalties. But now they're codified. So not only are they now on the hook for them, but it's now actually law. And once again, it doesn't do anything for the millions of dollars that we have just seen devastated out of the, the Minnesota economy. Because we had a little despot for a governor who thought he knew best. <sighs> Keep your eye on the politicians, on the elected and appointed servants. They're playing you. And they don't care about you for the most part. There's a few, but most of them don't. You're nothing but a chess piece in their hands to keep power and to keep making money. So, as always, until next time, don't worry about your safety. Fight for your liberty and freedom. And Six Semper, Tyrannus.